Hello guys, this, this, ooh, feedback, excuse me, there we go, sorry about that. Live, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today and we are going to be talking about scientific notation, exponential notation, engineering notation, and prefix notation. Now this is something that those of us in the engineering world just sort of throw out terms and just sling them around. But as I'm going through these lessons, what I'm finding is a lot of guys are not familiar with this nomenclature that we use to handle numbers in the engineering world. And it can be very confusing. And so I think that what I'd like to do is just stop and explain it because it's very important that we understand this and it's very important that we understand it correctly okay now because i'm going to be kind of talking math today as i am giving this presentation i am going to have to be focusing on what i'm saying so i am not going to be able to answer questions as i'm going but then at the end of the presentation i'll look at the chat box and i will begin uh, i will begin a conversation with you looking at your questions and try to answer them while i'm talking though if you guys want to talk among yourselves that will be great okay does that sound good all right let's move over and let's kind of start talking about these different notations and forgot to tell you to get your coffee did everyone have time to get their coffee? I don't know. I kind of was late getting the notification out for this live stream. So I don't know if you guys had time to get your coffee or not. But I certainly hope that you guys have coffee. All right. <clears throat> so what is this nonsense about these different engineering notations? And how are they similar? And how are they different? I'm going to be talking about four different notations are kind of like ways of dealing with numbers. And they're all very, very similar, but we have to understand the differences between them. What we're going to be looking at is exponential notation, scientific notation, engineering notation, and prefix notation. So what about it? Why can't we just use normal numbers like seven? Mm, I want a hamburger. How much does it cost? Seven dollars. Life is so easy when we use nice simple numbers. But the problem that we run into in the engineering world is, let's th think, if you go buy a hard disk, a hard disk today might be one trillion bytes. Okay, that's one trillion bytes. So that's one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's this number. All right. Is this number correct? Yes. What is the problem? If you start working with this number and you start adding it to another number and dividing by another number and either you're coding it up by typing it in the computer or you are putting it in the calculator, what inevitably is going to happen? Like if you're doing all these zeros, you are going to inevitably drop one and then you look at it and it looks so right and your results are not coming out right. Okay, what's another thing? Well, when we are dealing things with things like the uh, Arduino Nano, or we're dealing with the Raspberry Pi, and we're working with circuits, a lot of times we could have very, very small circuits. We could have very, very small currents. And some of these things, like when a transistor is set to an off state, it could have one, one trillionth of an amp. Like back in the day when I was in the lab with a oscilloscope and with measure, measurement equipments, I would measure a... Uh, I would measure a picoamp, one one trillionth of an amp. Well, how would you write that? It's point two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That would be the amount of current in some of these devices. This is how many bits that you might have or bytes that you might have on a hard drive. So the thing that we find in the engineering world is we find ourselves having to deal with extremely large numbers and extremely small numbers and we need a way of doing it where we can kind of work through our problem where we're not having to just be burdened with all of these zeros and so let me kind of make a let me make a 
a simpler one. Let's say that we are going, uh, let's say that we are going uh, one megawatt, one million watts. So that would be one and then th six zeros. Okay, that's one million, right? It kind of helps you if you put commas in, but one million would be a million watts. That would maybe be what a wind turbine might produce. It might produce one million watts. Okay, well, the first thing that we are going to look at is the first thing that we are going to look at is exponential, exponential notation. Exponential notation. And that is, let's just group all of these zeros together. So I still have a 1, so it's 1 times 10 raised to the 6. So I could write 1 million as 1 times 10 raised to the 6, and my units are still watts. Okay. Now, I can write this without making a mistake because all of this nonsense is encapsulated into this 6. How about this one? Well, that would be 1 times 10. How many zeros did I have? 12. 1 times 10 to the 12th, and that was bytes. You see, if I write this down, I'm not going to make a mistake. If I write this down over and over to try to work through a problem, I'm going to make a mistake. So the units are the same bytes, but it's 1 times 10 to the 12th bytes, 1 times 10 to the 6 watts. Now, what is this one? Now, it works a little bit different. You've got to be a little careful if you have a number less than 1. If you have a number like this, a starting point is to just kind of look. Your tendency, your, your temptation is to count the zeros, but really that's going to mess you up. What you want to do in exponential notation is you want to move the decimal point to the right of the first digit. Okay, what is the first digit? The first digit is a 1. So I want to move my decimal right here. How many point places do I have to move the decimal? Well, right now the decimal is right here, so I have to move it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now I have 1 point times 10 to the 6. One, 1 decimal times 10 to the 6 because I had to move this to the left 6 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it puts it here. Well, if you say, well, I just count the zeros, the problem is that won't work on this one. So let's look at a microamp. A microamp would be point one, two, three, four, five, one. That would be a my uh, amps. This would be one microamp. Well, what you see here is is that when you're going the other way, you can't count the zeros because it's one, two, three, four, five, zero. So counting the zeros doesn't work, but moving the decimal point does. And so we are going to move the decimal point one, two, three four, five, and six, okay? Because still, you want the decimal point to the right of the first real digit, and these zeros are not real digits. So this number would become one times 10. Now we are moving it this way, so it becomes negative six. One times 10 to the negative six. When we move it this way, it is a positive number. So this would be 1 times 10 to the minus 6 amps. All right. So do you see how it works? Wherever you are, you move the decimal point to the right of the first number. Let's do this one. Okay, so this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so this would be 1 times 10 to the 12th, uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 12, because we moved it this way, 1 times 10 to the minus 12, and this one we said was amps, all right? So you're moving the decimal point either to the right or the left, whatever it takes to get the decimal point to the right of the first digit. Okay, these are pretty easy, but what if I had 1,235,000 watts. 
Okay. The rule is still the same. You move the decimal point to the right of the first digit. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what would the answer be? 1 point two three five one point two three five times times ten to the sixth. Boy, I did not write that good, did I? One point two three five times ten to the six. Okay, and we are in watts. Alright. Do you see how much nicer this is to write than this? But also, you see, you don't just have, have to have a number with a bunch of zeros. Let's do another one. What if I said I'm going to go 2,345 kilometers, or 2,345 meters? Okay. Well, what do I do? I move it 1, 2, 3. So I have 2.345 times 10 to the third because I moved it three places. Let's do another small example. Okay, so let's go point, point oh, oh, 001 amps. Or let's go point oh, oh, 00134 amps. Point oh, oh, 00134 amps. Well, I'm going to move the decimal point one, two, three. Now I'm to the right of the first digit. That's 1.34. 1.34 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. Okay. <clears throat> Does that make sense? That is exponential notation. The key on exponential notation is no matter what your number is, you want to move the decimal to the first place to the right of the first real number. And the leading zeros are not real numbers. Does that make sense? Okay, well, if that is exponential notation, then why do we need scientific notation? Because if you look at scientific notation, your calculator, and guys, if you don't have one of these, it's probably good if you are in high school or going to engineering school in college. I really recommend one of these uh, Texas Instruments TI-84 calculators. I'll put a link down below. Uh, it does what you need to work engineering problems. Now, I'm really against calculators in math class, but when you get into engineering, you're going to have to do a lot of these calculations with these scientific notations, and a calculator is a very suitable thing to have. But the calculator, you can't say 1.34 times 10 to the minus 3. What it has is it has a key that is the key on the calculator, The key on the calculator is labeled EE. E. Okay. The key on the calculator is labeled EE. E. And if we look at this one, and I am having trouble showing it to you. Maybe I can put it like this. Okay, I'm sorry. But do you see on the TI-84, it is the blue EE e that is under the comma. That means you hit second and then EE e to get the EE. E. Well, what is this EE e nonsense? Well, what EE e means is, what EE e means is times 10 to the, okay. So, what the EE e replaces is times 10 to the. So how would I write 1.34 times 10 to the minus 3, you know, using the scientific or the calculator method? It would be 1.34 e e to the minus 3. And you've got to understand on the calculator this minus is not the minus sign, it's the change sign. So if I wanted to put uh, 1.34 e to the minus 3 in the calculator, what I would do is I would turn the calculator on, I'm going to clear it, and then I'm going to, man, I'm going to have to do this sideways so you can see it. I'm going to do 1.34 and then second and then ee e, and then change sign 3. 
okay and then what it did was it changed it back to normal decimal notation and that's probably because I haven't put it in scientific notation mode so I can say second or I can say not second but just hit mode and then if you look down here it is in normal I want to tell it to do scientific notation and so now I will do second mode to get out of that and then if I hit enter again okay now ah, did that not do it let's try it let's see okay it seems to be giving it to me in both ways I would just wish it would I guess I didn't change it so I gotta come here to scientific click enter and then second quit alright <coughs> now it is giving me the answer in scientific notation now what you notice is is that while the button says EE -E, while the button says EE -E, yeah you can't see that while the button says EE, -E, it really just writes it as an E. And similarly, when we write this number among engineers, we would write it with one E, 1.34 E to the minus 3. Okay, and then always put your amps or your watts or your whatever. Okay, always put your uh, units on it. It's very good habits to always put your units. So... I think what you can see is, I think that what you can see is that this is uh, a very good way of handling numbers, and I think it makes a whole, whole, whole lot of sense. So, we uh, let's review what we have done so far, and I'm having trouble keeping this in an area of the camera. I'm trying to be very mindful that you can see what I am writing. I hear water running outside in a strange way. I will ignore the water that is running outside and I will focus and continue on. So, uh, so we have exponential notation. Exponential. Exponential notation. And this would be, you would take like 1250 and you would make it 1.25 times 10 to the 3 and then what we have is scientific notation and scientific notation would be 1.25 e to the 3 Okay, so this is this is easy to understand, right? You you kind of got to think to go from here to here, but between these two, they're really exactly the same. And in fact, even as an engineer, it's easier to write this because, like, if you weren't careful just in your notes and you said 1.25 times 10 to the 3, if you weren't very mindful about making that a superscript, somebody might think that was 1.25 times 103 and could be confused to where when you look at this there is no you know there's no way that you would get confused okay so now what is, so we've got exponential notation and scientific notation they're the same what's the big deal why do we need anything else well let me let me show you why we really do need something else okay let me show you why we really do need something else let's say I had uh, let's say that I had two, three, four, zero, 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 zero watts. Okay, two, three, four, zero, 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 zero watts. Using the rules of exponential notation. What you would say this would be would be 2.34, and then we would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay, e to the 7. All right, I'm going to kind of drop exponential notation because you know it's the same as scientific, so I'm just going to write it like this, okay, watts. All right, is this correct? Yes. Is it the most useful way to present the number? No. Because what do you talk about when you talk about power generation? 
you don't talk about times 10 to the 7th watts. You talk about megawatts. <coughs> Mega is 10 to the 6th. Okay, so really what you want is you want the decimal point here, which is in, which would leave you with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so what you would really like to write this as, which is exactly the same number, but just written differently, 23.4 e to the 6 watts. Why do you want to do this? Because you know e to the 6 is mega. So I could say, oh, it's 23.4 e to the 6 watts, or I could say it's 23.4 megawatts. Okay, so the rule that's different in scientific notation is the rule is not to move the decimal point to the right of the first digit. The rule is to make the power or to make the e a multiple of 3. Okay, why a multiple of 3? Well, a thousand meters is a kilometer. A million watts is a megawatt. A billion <clears throat> bytes is a gigabyte. A trillion bytes is a terabyte. If I have this real small little measurement on the ruler, the little tiny tick, that is one one thousandth of a meter. That's a millimeter. Okay, then you would have a micrometer. Then you would have a nanometer. Then you would have a picometer. So these engineering, these engineering terms go in groups of three. So therefore, you want to move the decimal to get the, the largest factor of three that you can. So let's, let's try this one. What if I have one, two, three, like that? Okay. You can't see that, can you? One, two, three, like that. So what do you want to do? Well, if I moved it, I would want to go one, two, three. And then I stop because I can't get three more. So this would be 12.3 e to the three. Okay. Now what if I had point o, 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 1? All right. Now this is a little trickier because I would come 1, 2, 3, and you say, good, it's 3. But when I'm going this direction, I have to at least get past the decimal. So I can't stop here. i got to go 1, 2, 3. Now what I'm forced to do is I have to go 3 more. So it would be 1, 2, 3. So I go 1, 2, 3. I'm not past the first digit. So I have to go 1, 2, 3. Three. And so this would be like a zero and a zero. So what would this number be? This would be 100 e to the minus, and I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 100 e to the minus 6. Does that make sense? Now, it is in fact the number 0.1 e to the minus 3, right? I could have done that, point 0.1 e to the minus 3. But this is not, uh, I could have gone point 0.1 e to the minus 3. These two numbers are the same. But this is not proper engineering notation because you want to always at least get to the right of the first one. Now in this case, to get there, we've got to go two more. But what it is, is you do whatever necessary to number one, get a power that is a multiple of three, and then number two, make sure that you at least go past the decimal. Similarly, like if I had uh, 100,000, okay, that would be one, two, three. So that would be 100 e to the three. Okay, 100 e three. 100 e three. All right. 
that's the right answer. Now, if I went three more, one, two, three, four, five, six, that would be 0.1, right, because you moved it all the way here, 0.1 e to the sixth. These two numbers are the same number, but this is not acceptable scientific notation because you've got the decimal to the left of the one. Okay, this is good. So let's just work a couple of more of those engineering ones. All right, so let's say I have one, two, three, O, 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 and let's say that that is, uh, uh, let's say that that is watts. All right, so how would I do this? I would go one, two, three, and then I would go four, five, six. Okay, and I cannot go, if I go three more, I'm going to be to the left, so I need to stop there. So that is 123 e to the six watts. Okay, why is that good? Well, we, because we know that that's 123 megawatts, e to the 6 and mega. As we get good in engineering, those two things are just going to be interchangeable. So let's say I have 123, and i am really got to be mindful to make sure you guys can see 123, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So if I put this in exponential notation, exponential notation, this would be 1 point two three times ten to the one two three four five six seven eight times ten to the eighth ten to the eighth is not very very useful we can go to scientific notation scientific notation and this would just be one point two three e to the eight <coughs> okay but when I'm going to go to engineering notation Engineering notation is going to be, I got to go with an even number, uh, you know, something that's a multiple of three. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. It is going to be 123 e to the six. And then all of these are in watts. Okay, does that make sense? Now, here's where the beauty comes in. The beauty, and, and let me show you on the calculator. Okay, so what we did while ago on the calculator, what we did while ago on the calculator, we went to mode, and do you see how we set it in scientific? Look what is really cool. I can come on over <coughs> and I can set it into engineering. Okay, and I hit enter this time and then second quit. All right, now let's put that number in 123. One, two, three, four, five, six zeros, and then click enter. Boom! It puts it 123e to the six. So it's making those things be proper. Let's look and see what was this uh, what was this earlier one that we did? I had a I had another one that I wanted to look at. Uh, okay, let's look at this uh, 0.0001. Okay, let's look at this. This 0.0001. So I'm going to go 0.0001 and enter. And do you see how it made it this 100 e to the minus 6? It knew not to go 0.1 e to the minus 3, even though these are the same numbers. Now I can show you those are the same numbers because I can type in <coughs> 0.1 e to the change sign three. And guys, remember, it's this button down here, not that button. 0.1 e to the change sign minus three, and then enter. And look at that. It says, uh-uh, not on my watch, not on my watch. This might be a multiple of three, but you didn't get the decimal point over to where it needed to be. So it properly wrote this as 100 e to the minus six. Okay, does that make sense? All right, I'll get back. I, I, I hope you guys, are you guys leaving comments? I will get back to your comments in a minute here.
Yeah, we got a lot of comments building up here. So, so there's one more thing that you have to see. Why do we want to go into these multiples of three? Because that is what the engineering world does. And there are these prefixes that we use, and they come in chunks, chunks of three. <clears throat> I think it's probably chunks of three because somewhere along the way, that's where we put the commas in. And so we sort of do these things where the commas would be on big numbers. So the biggest number <clears throat> that you would probably run into now is uh, Terra. Okay, Terra. I just, man, I'm drawing a blank. I'm, there's a 10 to the 15th, and I'm not just immediately drawing what 10 to the, the, the uh, 15th is. But you've got, uh, you've got uh, Terra, which is 10 to the 12th. And then you've got Giga, which is 10 to the 9th. And then you have Mega, which is 10 to the 6th. Kilo, which is 10 to the 3rd. And then you've got 1 which is just one, and then you've got to the minus three, 10 to the minus three, and that's milli. You have 10 to the minus six, which is micro, and you have 10 to the minus nine, which is nano, and you've got 10 to the minus 12, which is pico, and then you've got 10 to the minus 15, uh, which is uh, femto, and then you've got 10 to the minus 18, which is addo. So you see, I'm, you see, I did better on the downside. I, I work in my world more with small numbers than, uh, than big numbers. This is bugging me, though. Uh, what comes after Terra? Ah, billion. Oh, okay, I should have known that peta. Yeah, because like right now they're doing petaflop machines. Okay, so 10 to the 15th is peta, and then 10 to the 18th is exa. Okay, exa is a quintillion, peta is a quadrillion. And we are starting to work with peta, right? We've got peta bits and we got petaflop machines. So we do work with those. But for us normal people, I think us normal people, we would uh, we would kind of start. Let's just try to focus on ten to the twelfth is a terra. Okay, ten to the ninth is a uh, giga. Okay, ten to the sixth is a mega. 10 to the third is a kilo. And then one is one. And then we're going to have <coughs> 10 to the minus three is milli. And then 10 to the minus six is micro. Uh, let me word, write the word micro. Micro. And I am so sloppy today. Micro. And then 10 to the minus 9 is nano. And then 10 to the minus 12 is femto. Femto. Uh, let me make sure I spelled that right. I hate to do things wrong when I'm trying to teach. Oh, man, I did mess up. Did, how many times have I messed up? That's pico. Okay. And 10 to the minus 15 is femto. 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 Man, I hope I didn't say it wrong earlier. Pico, right? Pico goes with terra. And right, I did work with femto amps, but that was 10 to the minus 15. Okay, so we got this straight now. So let's kind of also look that a lot of times you might write it. So let's just go to the, the, the simple notation like e to the 12, e to the 9, e to the 6, e to the 3, and then you have 1, and then you have e to the minus 3, you have e to the minus 6, you have e to the minus 9, you have e to the minus 12. And then what we said is this is terra, and then this is giga, and this is mega, 
and this is milli, and this is or this is mega, this is kilo, kilo, and then this is milli, and this is micro, and this is nano, and this is pico. All right. Now you could say a megawatt. But a lot of times you go, so this then, when you use these, this is prefix notation. All right, so prefix notation would be like if I have one million watts, this would go to engineering notation, which would be one E six watts. And then what prefix notation is, is to take that to one megawatt. Or let me write it out as one megawatt. All right, so the mega replaces the e to the six because it's like, ah, how much power did you get today? Ah, we were running about 23 megawatts, you see it becomes very intuitive when you talk in terms of prefix notation. So usually you go to prefix notation. Now sometimes in prefix notation there is a shorthand and that's a one letter substitution. So Terra is an uppercase T. Giga is an uppercase G. Mega is an uppercase M. Kilo is a K. Sometimes it's uppercase, sometimes it's not. It doesn't really matter because it's the only K. But a big M is very important because the small M is milli. So, right, if you said one milliamp, like if you told someone, hey, I need one milliamp, and you wrote it with a big M, that's a mega amp. You see, there's a big difference between a little m and a big m. You've got to keep that straight. And then micro is this mu. It sort of looks like a mu. It sort of looks like a u. This is micro. Nano is a little n. Pico is a little p. <coughs> so you can go into this shorthand. So 1 million watts. Uh, let's, do, let's do 12, 3, 4, 12, 3, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is normal notation. What would this be in exponential notation? This would be 1, 2, th 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This would be 1.234 times 10 to the 8th. Okay. Scientific notation, it would be 1.234 e to the 8, right? Engineering, what's it going to be? It is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's going to be 123.4 e to the 6. And then in prefix notation, it's going to be 123.4 mega. Okay, 123.4 mega. Megawatt, megajoule, whatever you're working in, it's going to be mega. Or you could do a shorthand and say 1.23, 123.4 big M like that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> One more thing that's very, very, very important, and this is something that we could get really tripped up on if we're not careful. So what if I told you that I had a current? Like, what's one thing that I know? I know voltage is equal to current times resistance. And let's say that I told you that, uh, let's say that I told you that I is equal to 0 0.0001 amps and the resistor is equal to 330 ohms. Now when you're going to draw, and let's say, uh, <coughs> I want to know what the voltage is. Now when you're going to draw this, right, isn't it nice to say, okay, 
this is 330 ohms and then you would say your current is rather than do these zeros what would we say we would say that that is 0.1 milliamps which would be 100 microamps right so this 0 0.0001 amps we would write it as 100 microamps we wrote that as what prefix notation so as you're labeling a circuit you say something like 100 microamps and that's perfectly good you can use it and use it and use it and use it but when you say v is equal to ir you have to see that you have to go back and use the real number this is a shorthand it's not the real number what is the real number the real number is 100 e to the minus 6 times 330 so like if we put that in the calculator over here okay I could do 100 second e to the minus 6 times 330 and that is equal to 33 millivolts right 33 e to the minus 3 volts which is 33 millivolts but you get yourself in trouble if you come up here and say oh the current is a hundred milliamps so I would take 100 uh, 100 times 330 oh look it is 33,000 volts no because you have to put the number in so you always have to go if you are working in prefix notation you always have to go back and put a real number in the calculation now Ohm's law in the calculation would be fine if you said 0. 0.0001 or it would be fine if you said 1 e to the minus 4 or it would be fine if you said 100 e to the minus 6 but it has to be one of those that's actually a real number so prefix notation is great to sling around and talk and shorthand but when you use numbers you have to use the real numbers okay guys let's see if I can get over there and start looking at some questions all right let's see we'll come back up here <clears throat> and I am going to come here and see if I'm gonna to, gotta to pop this chat out so I can see it better uh, okay uh, yeah it looks like there's some questions so let me come up here uh, uh, Abdul says hello hello Abdul uh, Mr. MD Rahman how are you I'm doing great good to see you back MD you're always in here uh, Betty hi yep XX uh, hi Charles Champ hi from Cape Town South, South Africa hey great never been to South Africa I go more to East Africa is where I hang out <coughs> but maybe someday I'll go to South Africa okay Nicholas hello no coffee for me what Charlie Charles Champ ah stop somewhere and get some coffee man yeah have a good day okay Gary uh, well over hey Gary how are you doing good to hear from you uh, Mezid hello how accurate is the GPS sensor man that Adafruit uh, non-axis sensor I mean the Adafruit ultimate GPS is really really accurate now earlier when I was using the Adafruit library I think that in an earlier version a few years ago they were like chopping off one of the digits and so when I was using that sensor with their library there was kind of like a 10 foot or a 7 foot uncertainty because I think they weren't taking it to the precision it was capable of <coughs> when I used their sensor and just got the raw data from the sensor and uh, and did the calculations myself man it seemed to be accurate to within a few feet I was just shocked at how accurate that thing uh, that thing could be okay sir please answer my question okay didn't did I not just answer your question man Mazod, you got to be patient man I was getting through the lesson okay I answered your question uh, a lidar sensor uh, I have not really used a lidar you know I've used the little ultrasonic sensor but I've not really used a lidar so I can't say much NM personnel uh, training hi how are you doing new is that NM New Mexico personal training okay hello from Blitty Steve where is Blitty 
B-L-I-T-Y, where is that? Okay, Steve, 1.35 times 10 divided by 6, okay. Lay is in Cambodia, very good, very good. Hello, sir, you're awesome. Well, thank you, that's so nice, okay. Jeff says it's cool. Sir, how to keep concentration constant throughout the day? Concentration of what? How do I keep what kind? Oh, are you talking about my coffee? Okay. Well, the coffee, initially it's very hot and I pour it over ice. And then this is a, and so it brings it down. And initially when the hot coffee goes on the ice, it melts about half the ice and it makes the coffee cold and it dilutes it to the perfect dilution. But then this is an insulated mug, and so once it gets down to temperature, there's very little further dilution that goes on during, uh, during the day. And so I usually drink it all, and I still have ice in it, and then I take it home, and at the end of the day, there's still ice in it. So there's very little, because this is so well insulated, there's very little dilution that takes place during the day. Now, I'm assuming you were asking me about coffee. If you were asking me about something else, I just really missed it. Okay, uh, I have been trying to learn from you, but my reading and spelling is not that good. That is why sometime you may not understand me. Oh, okay, that's all right. Uh, okay, yeah, so Jeff, hello. Uh, Limar Pubi, 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 I don't know how to say it, Linar. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce all these names. Okay, uh, originally you said Pico, so the Femto did catch me off guard. Okay, so you guys know. It's hard to do this stuff live, right? It's hard to do this stuff live. So uh, let's see. Kwame Edu Agikum. I cannot spell, uh, pronounce your name. I'm sorry. A colleague was discussing with me how good you are with Arduino. Oh, well, thank you. From Ghana. Oh, hello. I've never been to Ghana. I have a home in Uganda. And I've spent much time in Uganda and Kenya and Tanzania and all those places. But I've never made my way over to Ghana. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of questions on scientific engineering and prefix and shorthand notation. Had a lot of people asking me about this topic, so I wanted to make the video. You guys tell me, was this something you were already familiar with and this was just a rehash or did this help? lend any insight into the problem. Even if you guys had already seen this, a lot of people that watch this channel have been confused. And so if they couldn't make it to the live stream, maybe they were at work or school or something, we'll put this video up and they can come back and watch it. Because I think really to follow along on the videos that I'm doing, you've got to kind of get to the point that you're just really completely com got comfortable going between scientific engineering and prefix notation. So you guys that are out there, let me know. Give me a comment. Let me know, was this video useful? Was it a waste of time? Help me to know uh, kind of where you guys were. Let's see. All right. I am not seeing any questions. I'll wait just a second. What other things are you guys interested in? Hey, you know, I finished up today my series of lessons on the uh, BNO 055, and that's something I got to kind of figure out what to do. I think that our present Arduino tutorial series is going to go like, right, I release two videos a week. That is going to go all the way out till about March. OK, and then I would guess I would be scheduled to start the videos on the non axis, uh, the non axis project. I would be scheduled to start releasing those in uh, I would be scheduled to start releasing those in March. But the problem is, I think some of you guys have already bought your BNO 055 and you might grow impatient if I waited that long. But then I am really afraid of releasing three videos a week because I think that overwhelms people and then they just kind of like unsubscribe to the channel. So I think two videos. Oh, man, look at my hand. I got ink all over my hand during this lesson. How did that happen? How did that happen? OK, I think that it overwhelms people to release three videos a week. 
I think releasing two videos a week is kind of the sweet spot Tuesday and Thursday. And so like on one hand, I don't want to overwhelm people by releasing too many videos where people are not keeping up. But then at the same time, you guys that bought your sensor, I don't want to make you wait till March before I show you how to do that project. So be interested in looking for you. Hey, Mohammed from Pakistan. Great to hear from you. Thank you for tuning in. The Drunk Indian just got here. I am sorry you missed it. Go back and watch it. This was an important topic. Oh, Lanar, this video helped me. You explained notation quite thoroughly. That's why I don't have any questions. All right. If we, so you guys don't have any questions about what we talked about. <clears throat> How many of you are interested in playing along on this, uh, this non-axis project? Have you guys kind of been paying attention. I wonder if I can make this work. Let's see if I can make this work. I hate doing things live because then, you know, you embarrass yourself if it doesn't work. But let me see if I can. Let me see if I can get this thing to work. Okay. I'll be waiting for your questions as well. What do you want me to do about these videos, man? I'm not trying to hide videos from you, but at the same time, I do not want to overwhelm people in that. I'm watching for your questions. That did not come back live. Let's see. Give me some questions here. I'm trying to get something working as I'm looking at your questions as I'm trying to do 20 different things. Let me see if I can get back and see if any more questions have uh, have come in. Okay, uh, Muhammad, uh, I. I'm an electrical engineer. I tried to learn programming, but I'm not successful. What can I do? Well, have you been going through all of my lessons? Did that help you learn? You need to go through those lessons, and then hopefully that will get you where you need to be. Okay, that did not work. I need to kill this other program. Man, I really want to show you guys this, so be, be patient with me, okay? Be patient with me, and then keep asking questions, and I will see if I can get this thing to work. Control F2 here, okay. And I am uh, trying to do this one. And I'm going to come back and now look at your questions. I think that I can do a little better if I leave the questions popped up on a different screen. Okay. Uh, YouTube's algorithm likes it when you release more videos. So you mean you're saying releasing more videos makes YouTube move me up? The, you live and die in YouTube whether they make you in the little you might also be interested in box or Google suggest box when you get there people find you but the problem with the world of YouTube is you can do the best work in the world and if YouTube doesn't promote you like you guys you guys are very faithful and always come in encouraging leave comments watch things and stuff but we're kind of a small world to break out into the bigger world you need to have Google helping you okay so said that uh, do I think Arduino is useful in our real working life? Well, <clears throat> Arduino is probably not, but the engineering that you learn from Arduino probably is. And what I mean is, is that if you're doing a real application, you would not use a $10 Arduino. You would get the microcontroller and you would kind of build your own board, build up things around it like, you know, you know, under a dollar or, you know, small, you know, dimes, you could probably get a microcontroller. And so in the real engineering world, you know, you can't use components that cost dollars. You've got to do things that cost dimes or pennies. It's a game of fractions of a cent. The Arduino is great because it teaches you, but in most applications, in most products, you're not going to open them up and see an Arduino in uh, uh, in there. Okay, I think three videos a week would be nice for people who want to work faster, and for those who don't, they they just uh, watch the videos at a later date. Okay, that's an idea. Thank you guys for the ideas coming in. I'm going to let the ideas come in for a minute, and then I'm going to try to run my program again here and see if I can get this thing to come back to life.
Okay, this is not wanting to come to life. Ah, I see, I have a wire missing. I have a wire missing. I'm really going to try to get this thing back to life and show you guys. I'm going to try very hard. One little missing wire can lead to a world of pain. Okay, so let's see if I can... Okay, I think I've got this thing to life here, and so now I just gotta get this over here like this, and then let's see if I can show you this thing. Okay, let me kind of check while I'm doing this. I'm gonna check your your comments. Okay, it promotes you. Yes, they uh, they like to promote you if they're making money on you. Okay, I'm actually not a real big YouTube fan, but it does allow me to reach an audience, and so I do kind of put up with them. But I don't like how they do things, to be honest. I really don't like how they do things. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I am waiting. Rasmus says, I am waiting for the non-axis sensor in Python programming. Rasmus, have you gotten your BNO055 yet? The Falcon Jet Driver. I think the two videos on the Arduino per week is great. Adding the one video would help those who are wanting to learn the non-axis. I can't remember Falcon Jet Driver. I remember you commented a lot. Did you already order your BNO055? Uh, Mohammed, I work in low current system and I am interested in IoT. Can I merge Arduino with low current systems? Well, I would think you could. Also, we really, man, I need to get to the ESP32 stuff one day because it's kind of like an Arduino on steroids. I really need to get to that at some point. Okay, I really do. So let's see, uh, you guys that are clamoring for the BNO055, have you ordered your sensor yet? That would be my question. Okay, I was goofing with the software yesterday, so the Arduino is on the wrong side of my simulation, but I think you will be able to sort of see what it is doing. I will need to come over here. And bring this down. So let's see, the Falcon Jet driver has not ordered the VNO 055. Okay, for me to release those videos, man, I need to see some people say they've got the sensor, right? I'll put a link down below, but you guys get that sensor because I don't want to like release this and nobody have the sensor and then it's just sitting there. If you don't have the sensor, you're not going to watch the videos. So I want to see that there's a little community developing that is going to be following along this project. All right, I am almost ready to show you what you have been waiting for. Okay, so this is what we ended up doing. And I think I will need to get out of your way. And I will need to scoot this back. Okay, I'll need to tweak this a little bit. So you see, this is the BN0055 on a breadboard with the Arduino Nano in the real world. And then right here is the virtual world that I did in VPython. And now as I move in the real world, the one in the virtual world tracks it. And you guys just look and see how perfectly it tracks it. Now it's reversed here because one camera is pointing one way and the other one is the other way. But I guess I should really do it like this, okay? So you see, and that doesn't work because you are getting the other man I'm revealing you see like when I'm like this do you see how wonderful like I'm in some high-tech studio right it's just like whoa you know he's in like command central but then when I come over to this view you see the reality of the situation right it's kind of like the Wizard of Oz looking behind the curtain okay so let's see if we can move it over here I'm just having a horrible time getting this where things match. But if I have a really good view, it's just so cool to watch whatever I do here, the simulation does. And even for these crazy like 90 degree angles, you see how I did this without getting gimbal lock? And the way I did this without getting gimbal lock is 
I did it with quaternions, yes, that we actually get to the point here that we use quaternions. But you see, no matter what you do, that follows. Now, you can imagine you guys could really go just obsessive compulsive crazy and come in. And like you see, my simulation here, I just have one block for the breadboard. I've got one for the B&O uh, 055. And then I've got one for the Arduino Nano. But can you imagine just all the detail that you could put in your simulation? And then if you kind of like gave it a black background, oh my goodness, you know, you could really do a great, uh, great si uh, simulation. So I've got 22, I've got 22 lessons on how to do this. And we really go in, we do the math. It's, it's not just you do this and impress your girlfriend. You really learn the mathematics behind it. And then what I'm thinking about doing now is kind of <coughs> hooking things up to some servos so that like imagine you had this mounted on the servo and as you tilt it tilts you back flat so no matter how you move this the board stays pointed in the same direction so sort of like a self-leveling mechanism uh, okay uh, let's see you guys have not ordered oh uh, Rasmus has ordered the sensor great Ron has the sensor okay <coughs> okay so guys maybe you guys think about it I'm, I'm still I'm really trying to have like one I'm trying to have one live chat uh, you know kind of a shop talk have one shop talk a week when I can on Wednesdays school's going to start here pretty soon so I'll see if I can uh, if I can keep it up the other thing is once school starts you can imagine Oh, this thing is not going to focus. Okay, you can imagine that once school starts, it's a lot harder for me to make videos. Like man, I've been making three, five, three to five videos a day, and that's going to be a lot harder once uh, once school starts. So uh, if I release the videos too quickly, then I'm going to run out of them before I have time to make more. So what about this? Let me ask you a question. If any of you guys are still out there, what would you think about like if I release two videos a week, one for the beginner Arduino tutorial tutorials where we are going through the BNO 055 kit and then one a week where we are I mean yeah we're one a week where we're doing the super starter kit and then one video a week like Tuesday we do the beginner with the eLego kit and then on Thursday we do the uh, the non-axis what do you think about that give me some feedback if anybody's still out there the problem is this is almost live, but there's about 30 seconds between uh, <coughs> when I talk and when you hear me. And so because of that, I have to wait when I ask you a question. I really wish they would make it a little bit more live. Okay. All right. Let's see. Anybody out there? And you guys that didn't catch it live... Put a comment down below because I've seen the chat for the people that are listening live, but you guys that are not listening live, you can put a comment down below. Uh, okay, so the drunk engine thinks that it sounds perfect. I guess that you know one and one. Okay, one and one. All right, I might do that. The other thing that I would like to do is I would really like to talk to you guys about nanotechnology. Uh, so some of the live chats I'd like to do, I'd like to talk to you guys about uh, nanotechnology. That was kind of like a lot of my life I spent in nanotechnology. And actually, this little b 055 is full of sensors that are built based on nanotechnology. And I did like a lot of the original pioneering research in these components known as MEMS, microelectromechanical systems or nanotechnology that are inside of these chips. I did a lot of the original research on that. So I'd like to talk to you more about peeling back the hood and you guys understanding more about nanotechnology and how these things work. I also like to talk to you a little bit about how transistors work. All right, so those are two things I'd like to do a live chat on. Okay, uh, Yes. Okay. A couple of you guys seem like one and one would maybe work. And Ray Ray is saying, what about the weekends? Are you saying that I should make videos on the weekend? You know, right. you gotta, gotta, gotta know I am a pretty busy guy. I uh, really have a ho, 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 a lot of projects. Okay. The more videos, the better. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, whoa. What is this? 
This looks awesome. Hey, Henry, this is pretty neat. This is what, man, Henry, go down, buy your B&O 055. I've got 20 lessons to take you through this. And man, you show the girls this, they're going to be all over you, right? Women cannot resist a guy who understands quaternions and can do rigid body three axis rotations. Or young ladies, man, the men will just be blown away if you can do this. So this is really pretty, uh, pretty neat. What was the module on the left that you said? I'll put a link down below. It's the BNO 055. <coughs> the sensor is about 35 bucks, and everybody starts screaming, oh, well, I can get a non axis for six bucks. Yeah, but it can't do what this one can. So if you really want to solve the problem, you've got to get this BNO 055. Okay, I have a drawer full of non-axis sensors that don't work right. Okay, I have a drawer full of non-axis sensors that don't work right, and this one does work right. Okay, one-on-one uh, -on, -one on the weekends, not too much, right? Okay, yeah, on the weekends, I've got a... I, took you guys on a shop talk through my greenhouse on the weekends I work a lot on or organic farming <clears throat> and I work on uh, greenhouse work and I work on ministry work and so I don't have a lot of time on the weekends to to work on Arduino hey another thing I really want to do man I want to get into machine learning and image rec recognition and supercomputers so I'll give you guys a heads up I ordered one of these little supercomputers on, on a you know kind of like a supercomputer on a desktop and I'll give you guys a review of that and then if you kind of are interested we might think about getting into some artificial intelligence and some vision learning and so VN no it's BNO055 Henry give me one second and when this video turns into a normal video in the description I'll put the link to the the link to the sensor. Are you doing more balloon projects with your school class? Yeah, I think we're going to do balloons again this year. I ought to do a, a live chat on our on our balloon project. That'd be a great shop talk to do on the balloon project. The, uh, the challenge that I'm having with the balloon project, it has become so complex. It has become so complex that <coughs> it's kind of hard the high school students over the years have made it more and more complicated to where now it's so complicated you're almost afraid of touching it because you're afraid that you might break it. There's like 35 different programs and we've got programs in the ambulance, we've got programs in the in the balloon, we've got satellite uplinks, we've got uh, giga, gigahertz ham communication, high bandwidth, things coming from space it's like so complicated it's just that all we can do is keep it running so we got to figure out what we're doing there it's almost like we got to stop reset and start doing something different but we do want to still be putting things in, in space uh, machine learning henry all right man you're one of our real learners out there okay you watch one of the balloon videos yeah our production quality on those things was not great and so i'm really hoping that we can maybe go back and some of the earlier years some of the kids were really interested in live broadcasts and so it'd be really neat if we had someone that really kind of did a high quality production of the live uh of the live uh live of the launch okay Guys, I appreciate your time. I think this would be a good ch a good point to uh, jump off. Uh, I'll try to keep doing these as best I can. We're right at the hour mark, and so uh, uh, you know we're right at about the hour mark, and I don't want to go too too far on this. So, guys, leave me comments down below. If some of you guys will order that sensor in the link when this thing posts, I will go ahead and maybe start releasing this series. This is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.